folks, in this episode, we are what? Going through our all-time breakfast favorites. This will feed your crew and get the job done. Give us a like because it helps the channel out when you see these videos and share it with your friends and neighbors because we want to spread the good news throughout. Yes, we do. And I think if we go back to the all-time favorites, the one that really just, hey, when we fixed this on ranches, cowboys kept raising their hands up every morning. Bring me more what? Mountain man breakfast. Look, look at the layers upon layers of goodness. This will make a mountain man say, hey, I'm looking for a recliner. I ain't got time to work today. I'm over full. Over 2 million views it has had. Uh-huh, and the wind is blowing. It is a one-pot meal. Everything put in there that'll satisfy the hungriest cowboy, the hungriest person. When you take that lid off that Dutch oven and you see them baked like fried eggs sitting right there on top, it's like, ha! Hallelujah! It is a great day in the neighborhood. Now, we put bacon in it, we can put sausage in it, but folks, a thing that I really do love to do to it, and it ain't in the video, is cook you some of them big old center cut grilled pork chops to where they're just nearly done, and then just slice them really thin, mix them in there, whoo, and guess what? You wanna give it a south of the border twist? Combine you some refried beans in there with it too, cause you ain't gonna hurt nothing and mm, mm, mm. We're talking a breakfast that lasts all day. I had to feed this to cowboys a lot of times when we was moving camps and stuff because they wasn't gonna get a chance to eat dinner. That's why I think when they call it mountain man breakfast, you think of this big old husky man that be needing a meal that can fill him up that's a one time stop. And that's what this is. Now to make this even easier and simpler, you can get you a package of them frozen hash browns and you can use them, or you can follow right along with the video to where we made our own hash browns. Just remember to rinse them potatoes really well and to dry them well before you start. Coming in at number two on the all-time favorite chart of breakfast on your radio station right now, what is it, folks? Crispy hash browns. I don't know if y'all heard that, folks, but that's what I call a crunch. Over 4 million views. You know how many people was having trouble with hash browns? Over 4 million people, I guess, because I still had trouble with them, I did. I learned a lot making this video, I did, because you need to start out with clarified butter. And you know what people was telling me all along? Call it ghee. Ghee is a form of clarified butter that you can buy. That would be my number one tip unless you don't want to make it, but making it is so simple. When you put it in there and you sort of cook that butter down to where it gets white and frothy and then you can strain that off there, oh my gosh, make extra. That's what's good about this stuff because it's so good to cook in. But the thing that's more important than that clarified butter is taters that are washed and rinsed. Now you don't see it in the video, but I know it works really well. How many of you got one? How many, raise your hand, got a salad spinner? Huh, who, who got one? Put them hash browns in there after you rinse them several times, we gotta make sure that that water is clear so we ain't gonna have no starch cause that's gonna keep you from getting the crispiest hash brown you have. Put them in that salad spinner, I mean churn it, let all that water get around. If you don't have one, just be sure and rinse them really well. Don't put them on a paper towel and think you're gonna dry them that way. Put them out there on a good tea towel. Get that water sopped out of them. I mean, if you have to wring it out, whatever you gotta do. But folks, you gotta get them taters dry before we start. The other thing that's important is really good seasoned cast iron, but you have to have a lid that is gonna fit on this cast iron. Not a vented lid, I want a lid that fits on it. Now, I hear a lot of you saying, well, my cast iron skillet didn't come with a lid. I bet if you dig around in that cupboard somewhere, you can find a skillet lid that will fit on it. If you can't, you can always do what I've done in the past, turn another skillet on top of that one. Something that'll just form a barrier because we gotta have that condensation in there to cook them hash browns through. And then we're gonna just take all that off and get that crispy goodness throughout. And you too can make the crispiest hash browns in the world. Welcome back to the radio station. This is Casey Kaysen with America's Top 40 Favorite Breakfast Tips. Yes, it is. And what is coming in at number three on the list that has been there for quite some time? Ooh, a traditional old classic it is. Huevos Rancheros, Rancher's Eggs. Folks, this takes me back to Silver City, New Mexico, in the 1980s. Huevos Rancheros. 
Something that I learned a long time ago from an old Mexican cook out near Silver City, New Mexico, really it's all about the red sauce that goes on this. Sure, it's nice to have fresh cackle berries go out there and follow their chicken around in a little pen until she lays one in your hand there, but that red sauce is what's happening. But the one thing you got to remember other than that, bacon grease. I, I'm going to go with a comment that a guy put on this video a long time ago, and he said, if you don't have an old butter tub full of bacon grease in your refrigerator, you don't know what's happening in life, I'm telling you. But now they tell me you can buy bacon grease from Amazon, you can get it at Walmart. Folks, just go ahead and cook the bacon at home. You're going to render that fat down, but you're going to get to eat the bacon while you're waiting for the grease to cool. Because we need to have that bacon grease for what? to fry them corn tortillas in. Mm, it just makes it so much better. Traditional chilies, south of the border flavor. Guajillo chilies, we're getting that good taste in there. And a lot of people want to be putting just any tomato in there to blend this sauce because we're boiling them with some onion and some garlic, but use a Roma tomato. That's what we're after. Because a Roma tomato is gonna break down more. It's got not, not got as much water content as it, what you would say on them old beef steak tomatoes. So look for that Roma. Get them things boiled down soft, put them over in a little cool water. They will peel easier, blend that stuff up, season it to your suiting. I like to put me some Serrano in mine or maybe a little bit of that dried chili, chili de arbol. Give it a little kick to where you'll jump every morning. But folks, this is an old classic dish that'll stay with you a long time. And it's really easy to make. And it's just gonna please everybody when you put it out there and you plate it up right. Put them fried corn tortillas down. Put them two over easy eggs over it. Ladle that red sauce over there. Just get out of the way because they're gonna stampede plumb throughout the kitchen they are. Coming in at number fourth, best ever scrambled eggs. Light and fluffy and so moist. Mm. Was you needing like a bite? I'm sorry. Wait, no, you have to wait, okay? Mm. You're a good pup, you got good manners. People been saying you're such a great dog, mm. but I heard you drug a Yeti ice chest across the kitchen mm. floor and eat the dog food out of it. That's what I heard. Now, folks, I, I sometimes take a few things for granted and Shan will remind me every once in a while. Sometimes people just wanna get back to the basics and cook something that's simple. And you need to show them the best way to do this, the easiest way to do it, but the foolproof method. And that's what we did in this video, best ever scrambled eggs. And you know what you need to start out with? Anybody? You in the third row by the pumpkin sitting next, oh, sitting on a watermelon? Yeah, I like that idea. What? Yes, fresh eggs. If you got some fresh eggs, it's even gonna make this better. But you know, go over to the icebox. What are you looking for? Whipped cream and mayo. We ain't talking about it's just making for sandwiches nor making for dessert. These two are gonna combine to make you get the fluffiest eggs you've ever seen in your life. And some of you right now are going crazy thinking, who in the world puts whipped, heavy whipped cream and mayonnaise in the eggs? See a show of hands. Oh my gosh, everybody in the entire audience has watched the video. They know what I'm talking about. But when you do this, make sure that you get it blended really well. I like to put the mayonnaise and the whipped cream together instead of just dumping it in the eggs like I did in the video, you'll get a little clumpy, but you can get all that really smoothed out before you start, then put the eggs in there. Now don't whip them so much that you're thinking we're making meringue to go in a coconut pie. We just want them good and smooth, no clumps, no lumps, no nothing. You need well, 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 well seasoned cast iron. Not just one you just bought, been using. I'm talking that thing that's got that mirror black finish in it when you look, and what is it? Low heat and butter. Now folks, this is something that, how many of you know the smell of burnt eggs in the kitchen? I mean, it's just one of them things where you walk in there and you think, I ain't eating none of them eggs today. That's why we're starting out on low. Cause we've got these good fluffy eggs prepared that are just wanna just, just float right out of the skillet. And when you pour it in there on top of that mutter, mutter, that butter that has just begun to melt in there, get you a good rubber spatula. Something that you're gonna be able to blend them eggs with because I'm not talking about just keep chopping them up and throwing them back and forth, no, fold. Just go around the edge of that skillet as you're going oh so slow and just fold that back to the middle. Cause you get these big giant little old fluffy pillow envelopes of egg that just keep flopping over one and then another and then another. But always remember, low heat. What do you got? The best scrambled eggs ever.
You know, folks, we love you, we do. And we love you so much that what? We're gonna give you a bonus. I wasn't gonna give you but them that I just give you, but I'm thinking this might be the reason that some of y'all found us. How to make cowboy coffee. Now that is a lot of coffee and it will fuel cowboys up on any kind of morning. And most of the time they'd be 12 to 15 in camp. Always make two pots. This one will always get through, but I always have another one just in case of backup because you don't never want to run out of coffee. It's a video that's been out there and I mean it just keeps getting views and keeps getting views. Now when we're talking about cowboy coffee, I'm talking about the best coffee in the world. I mean that, the smoothest coffee in the world. Because when you boil that coffee at the right temperature, which is above 212 degrees, you break down the tannin in the bean, releases the acid, smooth coffee. No more heartburn, no more acid reflux. You have created the smoothest cup of coffee in the world. Frank Sinatra cannot sing as smooth as this coffee is. Not only is there a link down there below that will show all of these videos, but you can go to KentRollins.com and you can find our little page there that's got all them recipes on it. You can cowboy coffee to everything, but also check out our breakfast playlist because folks, breakfast is the most important meal in the world. But you gotta have it to get fueled up, to face the day, and to just go. And that's what we're talking about. These classics, these ones have passed the test. You can put them on your table and you will be the greatest cook in the whole wide world. Well, we sure do thank y'all for stopping by and we hope you enjoyed our all time favorite breakfast videos because y'all are what made them possible. You did. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over there. Hey, we appreciate you one and all and never take it for granted. Folks, come on in here, come on. Whether it's early morning or late at night, I don't care. You can eat breakfast any time of the day. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the all time breakfast trail. And remember, it ain't no step for a stepper. You can use frozen hash, frozen, frozen. Got them cameras rolling, Shanna. Film it up, cut it up, splice it up. Just I go. gotta have a microphone. <laughs>